and how to avoid people that could be playing you along. You well, know, that, I this got, is how you figure out if it's for real or not. So your book will tell you that because, you know, I have talked to people that actually gotten scammed, you know, going oh, in. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have them come to me and they want to, they want me to kind of fix it. And I, what I say is you have to educate yourself, you know, and that's why I wrote the first book to ed- educate people. What kind of reading do you want? Do you want past lives? Do you want future information? You know, and all the different kinds of readings. How, how a reading can work within your own religion, how it can work with your doctor, you know. And this is before we had uh, intuitive uh, medical people, you know, uh-huh. uh, how you can actually, I've given people information. And I said, now go back to your doctor and talk to him about it. It's not that I'm always right, but it's very seldom that I'm wrong. Oh, wow. Now, do you still, so, gi- do you still give readings to people at this point, or...? Well, Gary, now, uh, <laughs> I'm really particular. I'm really particular now. I, I got to the place of my own profession and my own age where I just don't do readings like I used to and just take people. Now I really find out, what do you, you know, what do you expect is going to happen here, and this is how I read. So I will, but I'm very particular because I, I look at it as I really respect what I'm doing and I want to have people feel comfortable when they come to me, that they also respect their time and money, and I respect my time and my energy. Oh, yeah. And that's how I choose people. That's interesting. So, yeah. Now, why don't you list the four books that you've uh, written, and, uh, you know, where are they available at, and where can people find well, them? Well, they're available on Amazon, of course. Uh, one is still on smashwords.com. Uh, it's an e-book, and it's The Timeless Counselor. Uh, they're available through me, juneahern.com, A-H-E-R-N, juneahern.com. And even their bookstores. You can go to your bookstore and ask for it by title and by um, my name, and, and they can look it up. And I like bookstores. I still encourage people, if they don't get it off me, try to get it, if you can, off your local bookstore, because I hate to see them going. Well, you know, that's one thing I hate to say. The Internet has done damage to bookstores, just like music stores and everything. It is what it is, right? Yeah, I guess it's a lot easier to go look it up on the Internet and, you know, you know, and hit the button and pay for it and and get it in the mail. Yeah, people like e-books. You know, uh, my my book uh, sells more e-books than actual physical books. So I sell a lot of e-books. All four of my books sell as e-books, mostly. You know, unless I'm doing events, when I go and do, I call them book parties. Um, they work out better than if I go to a bookstore. But if I do private book parties, we have a great time. We talk about everything. If and I always say, if the spirit moves me, I'll pass on a, ne- a message to somebody. So those are fun. I like my I like those. Oh yeah. Now, what can, of all the uh, ghost hunts or readings? What was the number one? Uh, not not including murders. But what was the number one thing that really shocked you and made you really realize, hey, this is really scary sometimes? Well, I was down in Jamaica. I was brought to Jamaica by Jamaicans uh, to do readings, and they were a wonderful host. Oh, my God. I couldn't. I felt like queen of the day kind of thing, but the day went on for two weeks. Uh, and I, so I was brought there to lecture, and I was brought there to do readings. One of the cases, a doctor came to me, and he said, my wife is really suffering from uh, this cancer, and we've been to New York, we've done all this stuff, and she keeps talking about these entities in the house. Will you come and check it out? And I said, oh, okay, you know, naively. Oh, sure, I'll come and check it out. Gary, I have never in my life experienced that kind of entities. I wa- Now, this is July in Jamaica. <laughs> okay. I walked in there, and I felt I walked into a meat locker. It was so cold. And I went over to, uh, kind of through the kitchen, there was this door that was closed, uh, like a large, large pantry, you know. And I opened it, and it was a blast of cold air. And I walked in, and the smell, oh, my God, the smell, like dead, like putrid. And I felt like they had to carry me out. I was, like, fainting. And I'm not dramatic. I'm from the Scottish household. (laughs) And, uh... (laughs) I I walked through that house and I went into the wife was under blankets after blanket laying there and I walked in and I started feeling like uh, wet towels 
were slapping me. You know when you roll them up? My brother used to do that, roll up a towel and sl- uh, just towel and slap us. <laughs> yeah, oh, you mean snap you or kind of like you get this thing? I was being slapped. I could hear the snapping. I could smell it. Uh, and then I started getting scratched. And the wife showed me. She was pinched. She was scratched. She was beat up. And the, they were these entities that were doing it. And, I, and I, was, I sat down next to her, and I felt sick. I was being hit. And I stood up and screamed, stop, stop it. And I told the husband, I can't. This is way beyond me. You need an exorcist. You need a Jesuit. You need someone to come in here. It was nothing I'd ever experienced or ever want to experience again. In, in the Great Star Theater, I got punched, and that was enough for me. But this time in Jamaica, I have never experienced anything like it. Uh, I was frightened. I didn't want to go back. They asked me what to do. They, they contacted me a few times. This is before email, so it was by letter, or they called me a few times from Jamaica. I said, the only thing I can say to you is move. But this, this was a couple. I was, what, 40 then? They were probably in their 70s. And uh, they said that had been their home. Yeah, but even moving, though, from what I read, you can move and they can just come right along with you to your new place. They can. They, they absolutely, you're absolutely correct, but I felt it was attached to the earth. I'm sorry I left that part out. I did go uh, and remotely look at it, you know, psychically remotely look at the land because I wouldn't go back to the house. And I felt it was, a, it was an orchard behind their home Oh, again, there was a small river there, and, and I had said that without going out in the back. I didn't know what was out in the back. I completely described what was out there, what trees were there, what river was there, and I said, that's where it is. You built a home on a uh, you know, low-grade energy, it's called. There's a book called Letters from the Other Side. It's an old book, and she talks about low-grade uh, energies, and, and um, I, I name her in my book that I wrote, How to Talk with Spirits, and I said it's a worthwhile read. Uh, and yes, they can attach to you and they can move around with you. That's an absolute. Oh yeah. But that... it's not always true of every place and every, you know, otherwise most of us would be walking around with these attachments. Well, a lot of people actually are, uh, June, but you know, yeah. again, too, a lot of times, you know, people don't know before they came to that property or even built a house, you know, I, like I've talked to people that they claim their house is haunted, but they don't understand why, because their house was st- brand new. And things were going on, and I said, "Well, do you know what was there before you and you know bought that house? What what property was you know there? I know when I grew up in West Seattle, uh, you know, back in the early fifties, uh, next to us was like a mini farm. Because I mean, parts people think Seattle was really cool, but the parts of Seattle back even in, in the uh, early fifties and mid fifties was kind of." Uh, well, kind of strange areas, you know, you'd find like old houses, old, uh, you know, going. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was... But there was a guy who lived basically in a shack. He had a shed next to his shack where he lived. And he was like in his late 80s or mid 80s. And one day, I guess he decided to hang himself in the shed. And, you know, his family, I guess, found him a couple of days later. And, you know, they sold the property, they bodozed it all down, built a brand new house, and then the people who were living it, lived in it next to us, you know, uh, you know, started saying things like doors would slam, you know, they would hear footprints, uh, weird things are going on, and they couldn't understand why. And then my dad explained, well, the previous owner of that property hung himself. Well, yeah, and, and he was still, that's where I talk about the difference between spirits and ghosts that I've learned. Uh, you know, ghosts have the spirit, but it's like repeat something. You ever had a friend that no matter what, they're going to keep telling you the same story over and over. Oh, I was in this horrible car accident. Or, oh, you know, and that's what the ghost is doing. They're, they're telling the story over and over and over. They just can't get over it. Well, it's like a recording that they keep playing it. I find that with some of my friends at my age. A couple yeah. of them are starting to do that. <laughs> Every time you see them, they tell you the same story over again. So after they just a while, want to go over you, the bad time in their life over and over. And you're like, oh, please already. Yeah, I've heard it 30 times, George. Okay, you told me that last <laughs> week. You don't need it. You tell me every time we see you, it's the same story. You know what? Is their memory starting to go? And, you know, yeah. they don't remember. That's, they, the, that's the spirit. Like, I hung myself. I hung myself. Look at me. Look at me. And so he, his energy hasn't left that space. 
Well, no, but that's, that, that's what I'm getting at, you know, because I also have a, a book author who's been on my show, Liz, numerous times. And, you know, she has like a little mini farm uh, in the Midwest, I believe. And one day she was out there by her horses or whatever, taking care of what she was, needed to be taken care of. And she thought she saw a young kid cutting through her property wearing a hoodie. You know, in like a jean type of, or camel, whatever, I can't remember, type of pants. But she watched him, you know, and then she took the eye off of, of him for a second. He was gone. And there was no footprints or no nothing. It was no way, the way she said he was coming, you know, uh, that he could have just been there. It was, you know, and then I said, well, do you know what was there before your house was built? You know, a lot of like from the Civil War, I mean, people even... You know, back in the 1880s, 1890s, 1900, a lot of people were buried on their own property. You know, they didn't get... Yes, yes, Fam- whole families yeah. buried on their own property. Yeah, and a lot of houses probably nowadays built on old cemeteries that don't even know absolutely. they were there. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely know here. They moved in San Francisco. There were so many um, gravesite areas, and they moved them all out, and they built houses on there. And now people are still talking about, oh, I'm feeling this and that. Well, you know, you build a house on top of where uh, bodies were b- buried. Yeah, that would be, you know. It, it's, it's really very interesting. And, and I, like I said, I'm more and more interested in studying more about dimension, dimensional energy. There was a, in one of my um, videos on YouTube, uh, I, I met this old sailor guy that was, Taking care, you know, they used to have people come out and take care of the buildings at night, watch watchmen, um, because people were always breaking in. And he was quite happy there. I asked him, you should move on. I'm thinking, oh, I should move these spirits on. You know, I'm so benevolent here. And he says, why should I move on? I have a great time. I meet all kinds of people like you. (laughs) (laughs) He says, you're not the only one that has seen me, you know, by the way. And he was very funny. And he said, he's quite happy. He says, what am I going to move on to? I'm quite happy. This was the best thing in my life. Now, I'm just wondering, is that when they passed on, they didn't step into the light? or, or how, I, what, I'm just wondering what makes them stay earthbound. Yeah, and that, that's, that's where I was curious, too. You know, I, I always thought, as you said, oh, go to the light, go to this, go to that. And I'm finding that uh, some of them are, are just not going there. They, they don't want to go there. Now, maybe some of them are... Uh, don't want to leave their life because they were happy in the home and they like it. Sometimes people move into homes and they go, well, there's a spirit here, but she's really not bothersome. You know, she moves things around on occasion. I've heard that a million times. Yeah, and then I said, well, you don't have to get rid of her then. Yeah. You know, but I, Why should we decide they should go to the light? <laughs> yeah. But you know, one thing I'm always scared about when I pass on, a friend of mine was Art Bell. And I'm sure you know who Art Bell was. Uh, the number one person in paranormal radio. Without him, the paranormal field wouldn't be what it is today. But John Lear was on his show one time and was playing around with uh, Art and and said, hey, you don't want to go to the light. That is a trick. You want to go to the darkness, uh, and then that'll take you to the light. So then, you know, Art always would say, you know, when I die, I don't know which way to go. Do I go to the light, which could be a trick, or do I go to the darkness, which might be, you know, I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll all find that out, won't we? Well, at some point, we'll all find it out. And, you know, when we pass over, those that have gone before us has been my experience. They'll give a helping hand. That's why when people are passing, they will often say, a loved one is with them, they'll say, oh, hi, Mom, or hi, George, or hi, so-and-so. And And I've been with enough people dying to to experience that that actually happens. Oh, it does. You know, I will say this, and we've only got a few minutes left, but if you don't mind, we can go about five minutes over. Um, My father was in a nursing home. He had Alzheimer's and dementia. And the last year he was alive, he was nothing more than a vegetable. And, you know, all of a sudden, I get a phone call from the doctors that, uh, uh, to come down to the nursing home, they said, we don't understand this. Your father is totally coherent. Totally coherent. Oh. And, you know, he was ba- basically almost brain dead. I, you know, and I had to drive about 50 miles to the nursing home where he's at. I get in there, you know, the like a year and a half or even two years before that, he didn't even know who I was. 
You know, that's how bad it got. And then it got that's to the point that bad. he didn't know anybody. He just stared off to 